Well, there's the, the, the prehistoric times and historic times. <clears throat> the prehistoric times are 1972, 73, uh, when uh, Steve Resnick and Rick Wolf came with a, a, a handful of their students from, uh, uh, from wherever they came from, from the City University of New York, City I think. College. City College, yes. Uh, <clears throat> now, the rest of us came, Sam Bowles, and, who brought Rick Edwards and uh, Herb Gintis, and uh, Leonard got attached to this group a little bit after this, the, the, essentially Sam and Steve had got this thing set up. Um, because again, he was, I mean, when, he, when the, they first came here, Steve Resnick and Leonard Rapping were both on the editorial board of the American Economic Review. So they, it was very prestigious, which was one of the reasons we were allowed to do this, I mean, basically. So then they got Leonard to come up, uh, and uh, the, it, this was a kind of an apprentice system. Leonard came and he brought me, effectively. Uh, Sam came and he brought uh, Herb and Rick Edwards, and Steve came and he brought Rick Wolf. So that happened the next year in, in 73, 74, approximately. Uh, and so that was the set of people who came. The, the program really opened the second the year I came. 74. 74. So you were really in the first generation. Uh, I was what, indeed. What was, what, was, what was the department like at that time? What was the, what was the culture? What was the feeling around the place? Well, it, 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 there had been a, a, a complicated, conflictual process by which we got there. So uh, there had been, uh, the, the University of Massachusetts was a regularly, a kind of small, not exceptionally distinguished university for much of its life. It had an ag agricultural school, nursing school, education school, whatever. And then when the golden age came in the 60s and money was raining down on everybody and everything, they decided to build a, you know, a first class a state university here and uh, hired, wanted to hire lots of new people. And in the economics department, the, the faculty was, I think, professionally not especially distinguished. And the decision was made to bring in a bunch of mathematical economists. So the, and they, some of them were very good. Um, so they came in and they kind of destroyed the department. I mean, basically they were, they were very focused on cutting edge mathematical economics. And I'm told, taught um, undergraduate courses and introductory courses that were very abstract and very difficult for the students. And uh, so there was, there was, someone could tell the story better because I wasn't here, but there was unhappiness with the state of the department. And Sam Bowles was uh, here licking his wounds from his problems at Harvard. Uh, and uh, he talked to people <clears throat> about the possibility of a change in the department, or, the, or they wanted to change the department, and Sam talked to them about his ideas about that. <clears throat> so essentially, they arranged to alter the department. So we came, and, and rather quickly, the people who were these mathematical economists left the department. We had perfectly nice relations with them for a year or two, but they left the department. And the people remaining were the traditional people who were here and uh, us. And so uh, there was a, a, a very courageous provost who thought that that, was, that would be the right way to go, I was convinced from talking to Sam and other people that this was radical economics was popular, radical economics was interesting, right? radical economics was, you, know, you have to remember this is the mid 70s, the student movement had been here. There was a period in the American Economic Association in which for three or four years, every annual conference, there would be a number of pro programs in which radical economists would be there. I was invited to two and, and uh, so it, there was a certain amount of ferment and radical Economics graduate students and faculty were fomenting dissent, and so it, so that's so they brought this. This was this, this the, the way they the path they decided they wanted to go, 
Uh, and when we all came, we had no idea exactly what our joint project was. <clears throat> so we talked a lot about it. Uh, so we essentially set up a, a kind of radical track in the department where so you, you, know, you do some regular courses and whatever, and then you can study with those of us who are teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like the word heterodox particularly. It's such a bland word. Really. <laughs> um, but we would, well, a lot, I mean, most of us, with the exception of Leonard, were uh, interested in Marxism. Uh, some of us later became less interested in Marxism or even uninterested in Marxism. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about me, but other, others. Um, but at that time, we were kind of comradely because we had this joint project. We, had, we were trying to set up a culture. We got all these, we got a tremendous recommend, uh, applications from brilliant students all over the country and to some extent all over the world, although the proportion of foreign students grew later on uh, because... There was some demand for what we were doing and almost no supply. Mm -hmm. So uh, our price went up. <laughs> um, so we had these great students, but the students also were in, coming out of this radical movement, this seriously radical movement, resistance movement. Um, and so the, the, the general consensus was that there, there was a revolution and the revolution was probably going to take place in Thompson Tower, where we were operating. <laughs> so they were extremely combative, boisterous, and you know, uh, argumentative and conflicting, and um, and uh, some of us loved them for that. Um, so th the other thing I would say is that the the faculty who were here then uh, made an attempt, which which uh, lasted for a few years to uh, interact together. I was in a study group with uh, Sam and Rick Edwards and maybe Gintis and me and somebody else, a Mark study group, a capital study group. And, um, and, the, and, and the culture was uh, wonderful for a while there because um, the fa first of all, the, some of the graduate students were as old as the faculty. You know, was the, was the faculty were all young. I, I was one of the oldest faculty. I'm maybe 35 years old. So we socialized together. We were trying to create a kind of a community. And, mm -hmm. and the graduate students had parties and the faculty came, or at least some of them came. The faculty had parties and the graduate students came. Um, and so it was really great. It was, it was, a, it was excellent and it was exciting. Uh, it was conflict-ridden, but uh, not in a bad way.